I've been experimenting with using Pamela's new workout as the central clocking source for all of the modules in my live performing case. That includes not just my two trigger generators, grids and Euclidean circles, but also for the 1010 bitbox sample player, for my tempo synced delay, for my arpeggiator, even for marbles, the random clock and control voltage source. Pamela's new workout has eight outputs and they can be programmed to different divisions or multiplications of the master quarter note clock, but I've been having trouble getting everybody to agree with where the one is. As you can hear right now, in my power up condition on this case, Euclidean circles and grids are disagreeing with where that downbeat is. Right now, grids is playing the digital kick, and Euclidean circles is playing the analog kick. Fortunately, Pamela's new workout has several different ways of sending reset signals, something that happens only occasionally to bring those modules back to the one. And so happens both grids and Euclidean circles have reset inputs on them. I'm using orange cables in the setup to show the reset path. So I'm taking clock number one, output number one from Pamela, and molting it to the reset input on grids and Euclidean. One really handy reset option for output number one, let's get down to one, is this step up option. It says whenever I stop playback, it will send a reset to both grids and Euclidean circles. And both of them then will say on the next clock, well, that's the downbeat, that's the one. So I stop, restart, and they're both back in time. Pamela always restarts from the top from the one when you start it again. Now that is all that you need in most cases. However, I'm the type of person who likes to improvise and play around with different settings in the middle of a piece. For example, I might want to change the clocking going to Euclidean circles. I might not want to change the pattern, but I might want to change how fast it's going. So I'm going to go to output number three, which is what's driving the clock on Euclidean right now, do a press and say, let's go up to eight times. Well, that's cool. It's going twice as fast now, but it's fallen out of sync. That's because it got some spurious clocks that were out of time while I was changing this divisor. I can stop and start again, and they're both back in sync again, but I don't really want to do that in the middle of a piece, you can understand. Let's go ahead and back this back to four. Stop, start, back in sync again. Well, another option is to have Pamela send a reset signal every several beats, for example, every eight or 16 beats, two or four measures of four, four time. Now it'll just constantly tell Grids and Euclidean to go back to the one every few measures. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and edit output one to not be the step up, but instead be a multiplier or a divisor in this case to send a clock out every eight quarter notes, every two measures. Sounds good, right? Well, listen what happens when I start again. They're out of time with each other. Stop. Start again. They're still out of time with each other. Indeed, Euclidean is one clock off. If I offset it back one beat in time, they're back in sync. But I don't want to do that for every single piece. So why are they disagreeing on what that reset signal is? The problem is, is they're disagreeing with what to do on the reset. Grids is saying, if I get a reset, I'm going to look at the clock. If the clock is high right now, I have a clock signal at the same time, I'm going to call that the downbeat. Euclidean Circles version 1, as well as some other sequencers, has a different approach. It says when I get a reset, I'm going to look for the next clock and call that next clock the one, putting it one clock cycle late. So what I need is a way of either moving the reset just a little bit ahead of the clock or delaying the clock just a little bit behind the reset. Now I tried some tricks with changing the timing of the reset to be a little earlier in time, hoping it would come out just a smidge ahead of the downbeat. The problem is, is that that so-called phase, and I'll go to that screen with a long press, is set in terms of percentage, 100 divisions. And when you're sending out a pulse only every eight or 16 beats, even 1% is a long delay. And I was chasing my tail trying to find phase settings that both grids and Euclidean would resync back on the one, but then they were both earlier in time than compared to everything else in the case, it just wasn't working out at all. So instead, I need to explore ways of slightly delaying the clock to Euclidean version one. So it happens just after the reset. 
I'm going to get out of that screen, go to number three, go edit its phase, and play around with either moving it in one direction or another to see what pulls them back in time. Short press to edit, making it a little forward isn't helping. I'm going to need to pull it back a little bit. Ah, they're back in time again. And every time you see a particularly bright flash in all three encoders, that's when it's getting a reset signal here. Should be another few beats from now. That's the reset Euclidean circles got. So this seems to work pretty well. Again, stop, start again, stop, start again, and everything works well. Let's go ahead and play around with my nemesis, which was editing this time division. It's going to speed it up to eight out of sync until it got the reset signal. Now it's back in time again. So this seemed like it was working, but I was detecting a really slight flam in some situations where the kick in grids was just a little bit ahead of the kick in Euclidean circles. And indeed that was because I am delaying the clock coming to Euclidean. This really becomes obvious at slow tempos. You can hear the little broom little flam there compared to higher tempos. And that's because my phase is a percentage of my tempo. So even 1% of phase change out of Pamela under some circumstances might be audible with Euclidean circles. Now I asked Vlad, the developer of Euclidean circles, just how much the clock needs to be delayed after the reset signal. He said microscopic, microseconds, not even milliseconds. So now I turn my attention to what other things in my case can slightly delay a signal. Well, one suggestion that Matthew at ALM suggested is even just using a very fast envelope, using the clock to trigger the envelope and using the output of your envelope generator to be the clock signal going to your module will give you a millisecond, half of a millisecond delay. That'll also work. But I also found that some logic modules like this 2HP logic also delayed the signal just enough. So let me change the phase back to zero again. There's just off a little bit again. And instead, let's delay it by putting it through an OR gate. An OR gate says, if either input A or B are high, I'm going to pass it to the output. And you can see it blinking down here in time on my clock. I'll take that output, go to the clock in Euclidean circles, let them resync really tight now. Not only are they in time, they're right on top of each other. I'll change the tempo. Something much slower. Still really tight, no flaming going on. So an active module, like this particular logic module, has just enough processing delay to slow down the clock so that Euclidean sees it as being after the reset, but it's not so slow that I hear a flam between the beats, between the drum hits. Now Euclidean Circles version two does have a menu option that works around this. It says whether or not to use the level or the edge of the incoming clock for the reset. If you use the level, it behaves just like grids. If you use the next leading edge, it behaves like version one but you're going to run into some other modules that also have a different interpretation of how to read the reset compared to other modules like grids. This works out really well for me. So this was my solution to get grids and Euclidean to agree on where the reset is. I have other modules that don't have a reset. Those include marbles and the bitbox. Well, fortunately they reset if they just don't see a clock after a certain period of time. The last culprit was my arpeggiator, and I'll show you in a separate video how I solved that problem.